Hey, this is Shane with BitBison, and today I'm going to go over the creation of player characters using the Verbinon Toolkit. Uh, to follow along with this tutorial, uh, I suggest you create a new Unity project, go to the Asset Store, download the Verbinon Toolkit, and extract it into your project. I've already done this. Uh, another additional step that you want to do is create a temp folder uh, in the root of your project. Uh, I've also used uh, that folder and created a material that I'm going to use to color my character base when I create it. Um, it uses the three color shader that comes along with this project, which looks something like this. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, to create uh, a playable character, there are a few steps involved. The first thing you want to do is you want to create the character root. So just create an empty game object. Uh, uh, set its position to 2 if you're using uh, the regular uh, tile size that the project came with. If not, if your tile size is different, uh, set it, the Y value here uh, to, to correspond with the tile size that you've used. But since my tile size is 4, I've set this to 2. And uh, yeah, I'm going to call it character root. This will be the root of the character, as the name implies. Um, so it will be the object that moves and uh, rotates and uh, uh, carries a reference to your uh, player controller script. So uh, let's set up the character root. The character root needs a box collider. It needs a rigid body. And it needs the Burby Nantan player controller. Uh, if you want to use audio, it probably needs an audio source as well, and we will be using audio today, so uh, put an audio source onto it. Uh, uncheck the play on awake uh, option and uh, check the bypass effects option. Well, again, this is up to you. If uh, you get uh, comfortable a little later on, then uh, you can fiddle around with these settings however you like. Um, so now that the character root is uh, is uh, populated with the with the components that it will require, let's let's create the base of the character. Now the character base would be your character model, and um, for this tutorial, I've decided just to use uh, a simple cube to represent the character base. So I'm going to create uh, my character base. Let's just create an empty just create a cube and set its scale to 3 by 3 by 3 and uh, now the character let's 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 call the character base as well now the pivot point of, of the character base needs to be at its floor uh, that is the position on the character which is going to be touching the floor now given that my character is a cube uh, the floor of my character is going to be the bottom of my character and uh, give, being that Unity doesn't let you uh, easily adjust the pivot points of cubes the way I'm going to do this is by creating an empty game object uh, which is uh, aligned with the character root meaning the pivot of this and the pivot of that that's uh, at the same point and then I will call this character base pivot and I'll parent my actual character base object to this pivot. So now what I have if I go to the side view and actually take a look at my pivot points is I have my character base pivot point over there then I have my uh, sorry I have my character root pivot points over there I have the character base pivot points over there and my character base while all of them look like they have the same pivot point, what I want to do is I want to move my character base up so that this pivot point is at the floor of my character model, which it is right now, and aligned with this object. So we are good to go for now. Let's assign the material to make this look a little more decent. And there we go, the material is assigned. And uh, to finish this up, I'm going to adjust the box collider on the character root to fit 
my new character model. So let me do that as well. Move the edges of my box collider up and this over there, that over there. I should be good now. Okay, another thing I want to do is I want to tag my character root at, using the player tag. Um, so once that is done, turn this to kinematic, uncheck use gravity, and uh, let's set up the player controller script. Now, the barrier layer mask is used to uh, check for barrier objects. And so uh, the layer on which my barrier objects sit is called barrier, and so that's what I'm going to check over there. Uh, the layer on which my ground sits is called ground, and again, I'm going to check that. Now, the barrier offset is used to adjust the point from which uh, the the character shoots the ray to check for the barriers in in uh, my game or the sample games. Uh, I've used a slight offset on both to make sure that the ray casting doesn't uh, uh, end up not intersecting with anything. Uh, so I've got a slight offset on the barrier and a slight offset on the ground. Um, now what I want the character to be able to jump, so let's put his jump height to 1.5. Uh, let's give him a small scaling effect on jump. Let's give him a rotating effect on jump as well. And we will activate the play character. Uh, let's assign his uh, audio source as well. And uh, now we have the character base transform and the animator transform. Now the animator transform is important because in most cases your character is going to have an animation attached to it. Uh, I'm not going to animate my character today but I'm still going to have to put uh, an animator on my character base. So I select my character base and add an animator component to it. Now that I've done that I go back to my character root and I assign this animator to my animator field and I assign my character base which ends up being uh, not my actual character base but the pivot point I assign that to the character base uh, field over here now my character should be good to go it's activated uh, let me save this as a prefab and now when I hit the play button I should have a character moving around in my scene with using the movement style discrete jump a la Crossy Road and, and the like of those games. Now if I want to change the movement style I again uncheck the play button, go back to my character root and change the movement style to let's say a continuous walk and we have a character that moves around like wow so that's it for today and uh, I'll get back to you with uh, further tutorials on how to enhance your character and how to create games using the verbi 9 toolkit